Let's bring in Labour's Rosanna Allen Khan, who is also a doctor, and you've worked in the health service. Just des describe for us um, what your colleagues are telling you about how the health service is right now. Yes, well, I'm still a practising A&E doctor. Um, I'm working on Sunday, and my most recent shift was actually over the Christmas period. So what I'm seeing is what my colleagues are echoing around the country, which is that they feel... Unfortunately, that this is the worst they've ever seen the NHS for patients and for staff. And unfortunately, we are now at the point where staff feel they cannot provide safe and dignified care. And we now know that up to 500 people per week are going to die because they cannot receive the emergency care that they so desperately need. So it is a very, very difficult time. Staff morale is at rock bottom, but really and truly, it it's very difficult to go to work feeling as though you have one arm tied behind your back and you cannot do your job properly for your patients. I mean, this, what does this come down to then? This comes down to the, the lack of funding. Uh, there's also the demographic um, pressures as well on the, on the health service. I think there, there are a number of issues. We have had 12 years of political choices that have resulted in us already having an under-resourced NHS with no slack in the system. Undoubtedly, uh, COVID-19 and, and the flu have caused extra pressure this winter, but this isn't a news flash for the government. They knew this was coming. We used to call it winter pressures, but that actually felt as, it, as, as though it lasted all year for the last few years. And we had a government when they had the summer that they could have been planning for flu and for COVID and for strep A. They didn't, they were too busy infighting and trying to find a new leader. And now we have a situation where people are having intimate examinations in cupboards. Patients are waiting up to 99 hours in, in an ambulance in an A&E bay, unable to get a bed inside the hospital. We're having children sleeping on plastic chairs, patients lying on floors, being examined on floors with sheets held up by nurses. We're, we're, we're at a crisis point. So by point. how much would, the, uh, would a Labour government increase NHS funding? Well, this is not This is um, a hypothetical question because we're not in government. But what we you, have, if you were, what we have is a workforce be. plan. We have an excellent workforce plan because we understand that the workforce is the front and centre and the heart and soul of our NHS. We would uh, train an extra 10,000 nurses and midwives every year. We would double the number of medical school places. We would have 5,000 extra health visitors. We will improve our mental health services, ensuring that people can access treatment they need within a month. And we have a plan for this. But what we have right now is an acute crisis that the government needs to get on top of. They can't blame the twindemic for the fact that we have patients who, who are lying on hospital floors. And you'd fund all of that by what, increasing taxation on people? We would fund our workforce plan by, by taxing uh, private schools, by, um, by, uh, by ensuring that we can raise £1.6 billion pounds for our workforce plan. So we have a fully costed workforce plan, which we are confident will help, but it's also about retaining the staff that we have got and understanding that we have 130,000 vacancies now. So it is going to take a, a mammoth, a mammoth effort. But ultimately, what people watching today want to know is if their loved one is having a stroke or, or a heart attack, can they get the ambulance that they need? Mm -hmm. If your child is unwell, can you get the antibiotics that you need? And currently the answer is no. So increasing taxes in some sectors will be one way of getting extra stuff. What about reform of the NHS? What about reforming the system properly? I mean, that is, look, you can see it's not working. It isn't working. And, you know, we have a fantastic Shadow Health Secretary who, who, who talks about the need for that. And, 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 says and, about and ultimately, we, we, we... It being a service and not a shrine. Do you agree with those, we, those words that we, we need to need, reform the way it works? We need to reform the NHS because it, it isn't working in its current form, is it? It isn't. Ultimately, right now, there is a very real chance that 500 people a week are going to die because they can't get access to the care that they need. People can't get GP appointments. People are having intimate examinations in cupboards. Staff are leaving in their droves. It's not working. I mean, what part of his critique was that GPs voted not to extend their working hours past five o'clock in the evening before 9am. Do you agree that that should be looked at again by, by the union, the doctors' union, the BMA? He's having his own discussions with the BMA. I'm not privy to those conversations. What I can say is we have a system that isn't working and we have a plan I'm to, to fix that. I'm going to push you because you are a doctor. So do you, I am a doctor. Do you agree with those ideas that perhaps doctors can, can do a little bit more to help alleviate some of that pressure? 
Look, ultimately, everybody can play a part in improving the system, but currently, doctors and nurses are broken. They are absolutely broken. Two-thirds of junior doctors want to leave the workforce. We have nurses leaving in droves. We have more mental health sick days taken than, than even COVID or flu from medical staff. We have a system that's broken. We have people who are, who are absolutely overworked and on their knees. But I'll tell you one thing. We have something in medical school called the My Mum Test which is when you graduate and you're smiling, because so maybe you've heard about it, oh, <laughs> you've heard of it. You want to know that you are providing the level of care that you hope and pray that someone will provide your mum. No one at the moment goes to work feeling as though any of the patients they see would pass the My Mum test. And that is a very, very sad state of affairs. And ultimately, it is an indictment of the failure of this government to get on top of the issues of the NHS that we are having a, a death rate associated with not being able to access care. And I and appreciate that. And everyone will appreciate all the pressures that are facing. But I do want to get from you some of the ideas that a potential Labour government would, mm. would bring in. And let's stick with junior doctors just for a second. You know that junior doctors are going to be balloted next week about strike action. Yes. At a time like this, for junior doctors to take strike action, what does that say about the way that they want to work in the service? Nobody wants to take strike action, and what we need is the government to get around the table so that that doesn't actually happen. So I'm I'm hoping that no one has to go on strike. Will when you it be comes supportive if they, if they voted for it? Well, I'm not eligible to be balloted, and I'm never going to tell somebody what they should or shouldn't do when they're feeling as though they cannot provide safe care to their patients. But ultimately, I don't want junior doctors to go on strike. Junior doctors don't want to go on strike. Patients don't want junior doctors to go on strike. We need a government to sit at the table and have the discussions. This, this is a mess of the government's own making. But if they don't, they could go on strike. You're asking reason. me a hypothetical question and it hasn't Dr. happened, Dr. so Dr. Okay. thank you. No, no, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> no, no, I was just saying, I was just yeah. saying that, well, you know, it is a hypothetical, but you could answer it if you wanted to. Look, let's talk about nurses mm -hmm. then. Nurses have got a, a pay demand that we all hear about, 19%. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's wise for them to bring down that pay demand to perhaps unstick these negotiations? Well, they've asked for the government to sit down and meet with them, and the government currently haven't. It's, it's always a negotiation, isn't it? People start at the sum that they want, people come in lower, they have a discussion, and, and that is what needs to happen. Um, but ultimately, it is an unprecedented move for nurses to strike. It's, it's, it's a historic event that none of them want to do, particularly when there's a cost of living crisis. We already have nurses that actually need to use food banks to go another day without pay. They don't don't do that lightly, but I've, I've, I cannot um, stress enough to you that the situation we face at the moment with nurses that are going into work, they are, they are feeling as though they are not giving dignified, safe care to their patients. And that is huge. And when you go to work with that burden, you have to understand the toll that that takes when you know that your patient may not be getting the medication that they need, may not be getting the level of care that they need, may not be getting that you know, stroke treatment within the four hour window, you have a patient coming in who's reliant on you and you know that because of, because of delays, they haven't been able to, to not have the symptoms, not being able to talk again, move again. That, that is a very soul destroying experience for NHS staff. Okay, uh, Dr. Rosanna Allen-Kahn, we will leave it there. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much.